Bizrat Hashem, with Hashem's loving grace, welcome to Amuna Beams with your host, Laser Brody. Today's podcast is entitled, The Second Chance, and it's a spiritual and emotional remedy for despair and hopelessness. One of Hashem's 613 commandments, or mitzvot as we call them in Hebrew, is a particularly special gift. This is the mitzvah of tshuva, which is commonly translated as repentance, but that's not its real meaning. Tshuva really means returning to Hashem. You see, whenever a person violates one of the 613 commandments, he or she distances themselves from Hashem. Well, that's easy to understand. If you ask someone to refrain from doing something that is hateful to you, and they do it anyway, then they certainly won't endear themselves to you. Even if they do it accidentally, it still needs a rectification. So if someone goes against your will, you're going to push them away until they come up with a sincere apology. By the same token, when a person violates divine will, as set forth in our Torah and in our halacha, which is the code of Jewish law that we live by, then he or she must do tshuva and rectify the wrongdoing. As such, not only do they return to their former proximity with Hashem, they actually get closer. We see this in the physical world too. For example, if a metal bar breaks and you call a welder to repair it, at the point of the weld, the bar will be stronger than the original metal. And we mend the soul, weld the soul by way of tshuva. The soul is actually stronger and more beautiful than it was before. Now, many people find it difficult to believe that Hashem really forgives them after they mess up. People say, well, is Hashem really going to forgive me for what I did? Well, the simple, categorical, irrefutable, and indisputable answer is a redounding and emphatic yes. Hashem forgives. Hashem loves you, and He's going to forgive you no matter what you did or how serious the Torah regards the transgression. Because Hashem loves you so much, He not only forgives, but He loves, He trusts, and He gives a second chance. That's the great gift. Tshuva is simple. It's a second chance. The only thing you need for tshuva is sincerity. Tshuva, it's like spiritual plastic surgery, but it's much better and cheaper than plastic surgery. Plus, it'll make you so much more handsome or beautiful than plastic surgery will. I looked on a leading dermatology website and wanted to find out how much uh, plastic surgery costs. And it says, for example, a facelift in the United States, this year is going to cost around $12,500 average price. Okay, people pay that. They're willing to pay that $12,500 to look younger and more beautiful. But Shuva does that too. And it does it even better. And it won't cost you a thing. After the spiritual procedure that's known as Shuva, you get a new and enhanced light in your eyes that makes you much more charismatic, much more beautiful and appealing to other people. They don't know why, but that's the truth. What's more, your soul rejuvenates and cleanses itself and becomes much more attractive to Hashem. How does that happen? I'll explain how tshuva works on a spiritual level. Imagine that transgressions scar a person's soul and inhibit the soul's ability to absorb divine illumination. Just the way that scratched or soiled windows become less translucent and they make it much more difficult to see out of. When your eyeglasses get smudged and dirty, you take a cloth and you clean them. But when they get scratched, you can't clean them. You have to replace them. Fortunately, our souls are better than eyeglasses. Because when a person's soul becomes scarred because of a transgression, then tshuva removes that scar of transgression and consequently facilitates the soul's ability to absorb divine Im- illumination and therefore to be able to get closer to Hashem. In fact, the word scar helps us remember in an easy and practical way just how to do tshuva in four simple steps just by remembering the acronym of the word SCAR, S-C-A-R, as follows. Okay, the word SCAR, the S stands for stop. Stop this moment, whatever wrong behavior you're doing, and desire to make a change for the better. That's the S. C, confess. Confess to Hashem what you did wrong. Confess to him the mistake you made. Because when a person confesses to Hashem, then the heavenly court can't judge him. That's a great secret because in divine jurisprudence, there's no double jeopardy. Just like down on earth, there's no double jeopardy. So if you try yourself and confess for something you did, then the the heavenly court can't try you. And that is really a good thing because Hashem is much more merciful and forgiving and the heavenly court is not. So the fact that Hashem is merciful and forgiving He's especially compassionate to those that come and admit that they made a mistake. Okay, that's the C. The A is apologize. 
After you confess, apologize to Hashem for what you did wrong. Show Hashem that you realize that you made a mistake. And if you committed a transgression against your fellow man, you must apologize to your fellow human being as well. The R is resolve. Now that you stop and you confess and you apologize, now resolve to do better in the future and ask Hashem to help you. Bingo! That's the above four steps of the SCAR treatment. S-C-A-R. And all a person has to do to completely fulfill the lofty mitzvah of tshuva. That's it. That's, that's it. that easy. You don't have to roll around. You don't have to go through all types of self-torture. <laughs> but the Yetzirah, the arch liar, the evil inclination, he's going to do everything in his power to deter you from that path of tshuva. He'll attack you all kinds of lies. He'll tell you that if you don't grow a long beard or dress black, or if you don't look like a woman from the Taliban, you can't do tshuva. Nothing could be more ridiculous or further than the truth. With the four steps of the SCAR treatment, S-C-A-R, you're home free. And I'll review it again. S is stop, stop the, the wrong behavior. C is confess, confess to Hashem what you did wrong. A is apologize to what you did. And R, resolve to do better in the future. That's all it takes. Sounds unbelievable, but it's really that easy. And just imagine, I'll show you how easy it is. Imagine that you neglected to pay income tax for the last 20 years, and now the IRS discovers it, and you owe a back tax of $4 million. So you get an audit, and you go before the head of the IRS, who's fully capable of throwing the book at you if he desires. Yet he's kind, and he's attentive, and he's understanding about everything you have to say in defense for yourself. But despite your excuses for not having paid income tax for the last two decades, you still owe the money, and you're still legally liable to pay it in full. Or else, okay, you got the picture? You got a big debt. And sometimes our debts in the heavenly court are much more than $4 million to the IRS. Okay, so just imagine the IRS, the head of the IRS gives you a proposal. He comes back, he says, okay. He says, I'm willing to wipe your slate clean of the $4 million in back income tax. All you have to do is from this moment on, begin paying income tax on a monthly basis from, from now and apologize that you didn't pay for the last 20 years. What? That's all? Just apologize for what, not paying income tax for the last 20 years? Apologize for the $4 million and start paying it from now? Do you agree? Your head's spinning, of course you agree. What compassion? Who wouldn't, who wouldn't agree to a deal like that? You take out your pen, you sign that you're sorry you didn't pay, and you sign that you're gonna pay from this day on, and that's it. So you just saved yourself $4 million and maybe 10 or 20 years behind bars. Well, that sounds fantasy, doesn't it? <laughs> no, but that's the exact way chuva works. In fact, that's low-level chuva. That's chuva out of fear. That's the cheap chuva where your debts get wiped away. The Gomorrah says that if a person makes tshuva out of love, his transgression becomes a merit. That means not only do you get the $4 million fine wiped away, you now get a check for $4 million. That's the power of tshuva out of love. Well, the evil inclination and the heresy of modern society, they've been giving a sham, tshuva, and mitzvahs bad rap. Terrible publicity lately. Tshuva is really umpteen times better than what I've described and a zillion times better than winning the Irish lottery. There's even more proof to everything I've said. It sounds like a laser's telling a fairy tale. Uh -uh, it's proof is right in the Torah. There's a mitzvah in the Torah called Pesach Sheni, which means second Passover. During the time of the Holy Temple, anyone who failed to participate in the Paschal sacrifice is punished by a terrible punishment called karet which is really a severance of a person's soul from the Almighty. But if a person who was far away from the Holy Temple, or ritually impure on the afternoon of the 14th day of Nisan, when we prepare the Paschal Lamb sacrifice that we partake of on Seder night, later that same night on the 15th of Nisan, if a person couldn't perform the mitzvah then, he's given a second chance. Hashem invites all those who were either richly impure or they were far away from the Holy Temple. He could come back a month later on the 14th day of Iyar, a maximum month later, and to fulfill the obligation of Pesach Sheni. That is our national second chance. And they're completely forgiven for missing Pesach Rish on the first Pesach. And they get full credit for doing the mitzvah in Pesach Sheni. Wow, Hashem, you're the greatest. Hashem is ever so patient. 
He grants each of us a second chance every single day, not just on Pesach Sheni. In fact, the two conditions of far away and richly impure are not only the two tickets to a second chance, but they describe much of our assimilated youth or the youth that has been fallen off the path. And don't give up on them. Hashem gives everyone a second chance, so we should give our youth a second chance. We should give each other a second chance. We should give ourselves a second chance. So grab yours right now, and by doing so, you'll not only be giving yourself a better life, but you'll become one of the beautiful people who greets Mashiach on his arrival to our rebuilt Holy Temple in Yerushalayim, speeding our days. Amen. God bless.